Hello friends, what's up? It's your buddy Keith and I am here live again in the control room at the one and only world famous Essex Recording Studios just outside London in Southend on Sea, England, baby. And I've got a 1979 Gibson Les Paul Standard that came to us from all the way over in Venezuela. Yes, that's what I'm sharing with you all today. So if you're new to the channel, hit that like button, smash subscribe, click the bell for notifications, We've, we're like 200 and change away from 10,000 subscribers on the channels, guys. Over three and a quarter million views. We're smashing it in 2022. And if you want to buy this exact guitar that we're looking at right now, that I'm going to tell you all about, well, you can head on over to EssexRecordingStudios.com. Go to the for sale section, let your guitars, Gibson. You'll see it right there. Uh, that's where we have our lowest prices. If you're an American buyer, you don't get hit with that internet sales tax they charge on larger platforms like eBay and Reverb, but we will also have this for sale on eBay and Reverb if you prefer to buy it there. So there you go, guys. This is a 79 Sunburst. Some, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of different references, vintage Sunburst, uh, Tobacco Burst. I think, what, what do they call it now for slash November Burst? But um, I always call this Tobacco Burst. I don't know about you guys. I've heard this just being called Sunburst. Um, Fender often has guitars with this burst color, two-color two burst, and just calls it Sunburst. So um, I'm calling it Tobacco Burst. I guess Vintage Sunburst might be the most correct. But in the comment section, you let me know what, what's the proper way to say it so that we can get some consensus in the community. All right, so we've got this beautiful top, beautiful color. 2022, this is a 79. This thing is, let's do the math here, 43 years old. Wow. So for 43 years of age, pretty incredible. You can see there's a three-piece maple top. So you got one seam there, one seam there. The 70s were known for having, uh, well, I guess in the earlier part, they had pancake bodies. This doesn't have that, which is good and preferred um but also known for having the oversized headstock shape which is really cool still the open book traditional shape just a little bit larger and was also the introduction of the volute on the back of the headstock that reinforced it and prevented neck breakage very very cool we also see here the introduction which came about the year before in 78 of the modern serial number format, which is the first uh, digit is the decade code, 70s, 7. So if that was an 8, it would be the 80s. If it was a 9, the 90s. So 7. Then these three digits are the day of the year it was made. So it was made on the 46th day of the year. So it was made in February. Very, very cool. Uh, and then the next digit is the, is the end year of that decade. So 79. And then the next three digits are the uh, production number. And my, if I remember correctly, I think the first, it's just like if it's under 500, it's done in Kalamazoo. And if it's over 500, it's done in Nashville. Something to that effect. You'll have to verify that. I think that makes this a Kalamazoo original Gibson factory uh, built Les Paul, which just adds to its intrigue and value. Condition on this is great. No neck breaks. Volute did its job over the past 43 years. Uh, neck, really, really nice. Usually, you've got a bunch of wear along the sides with paint um, just gone. Not the case on this neck. This is one of the better condition 70s Les Pauls I've got my hands on. A little bit of finish wear along the edge, which is very, very normal. couple dings there and there. Um, more edge finish wear there and there, but no heavy, like buckle rash through the paint to the bare wood that you usually see right in this area. Very common. Usually that, that paint work is all gone. Paint work along here, all gone. And on, on this side, not the case. So when I saw this awesome color and fantastic condition, for a 70s Les Paul standard, I said, you know what? We're gonna help a guy out in Venezuela. They're having a rough economy lately, past few years. Man, ever since Chavez left the uh, presidency over there, it seems to have gone 
downhill pretty fast. Remember that? He, uh, he was part of what George Bush called the axis of evil. Back when I was in the Air Force in 2003 onwards. Yeah, man. R relations weren't, weren't the best between the states and Venezuela. But uh, I'll tell you what, I've never met someone from Venezuela I did not like. I've, uh, I've had great times with Venezuelan people. And uh, hopefully one day I can travel over there. Get some free time and this pandemic goes away. Yes. So back here, you can see uh, all of the hardware on this guitar is pretty good shape. You know, you've got a little bit of like brushed uh, patina to the pickup covers, but they look really nice. You've got the gold volume and tone knobs. Pick guard is present and installed. There we go. Just a good looking guitar, guys. Got your rhythm and your treble poker chip. Fretboard, nice piece of rosewood. Inlays have survived quite nicely. They pop. Let me turn the lighting here. There we go. Look at those inlays. Those look great. Everything legible here. So, you know, a lot of times on vintage guitars, the Les Paul logo wears away over time. Not the case here. You've got your Gibson logo, which has yellowed a bit, which is normal, um, given that it's 43 year, years old, for sure. Frets are all original. We know this because all the fret nibs are intact, and it is the correct style frets from this era. Very, very cool. And as far as the wear on these frets, I mean, this is looking good, guys. It's looking real good. You know, Van Halen didn't get his hands on this one. No, no shred masters wailing away on this. Okay. Beautiful guitar. I think you guys have a very good idea of what this now looks like in person, what the condition is like. And, uh, you know, it's just cool to kind of let me be your virtual guitar store where you can just walk in and browse. You can sit in your captain's chair right there, crack open a cold beer, and just have a little look-see at something from 43 years ago that survived very well intact and has traveled around the world. Actually, when I got it shipped here, it went from Venezuela to Panama, then from Panama to Chile, then from there to uh, here in the UK. Took, took, took a while. It got a free holiday, that's for sure. But um, got here in the end. Comes with a nice hard case. Let me uh, show you this. Yeah, it got loads of airport stickers and stuff on the front and the back. And then a nice Les Paul fitted shape here. With a little, little cargo compartment and a nice thing to guide the neck so it's you know stays fit and firm very good all right guys i'm gonna get going because i've got another night of ozarks on netflix that i'm gonna watch season four got a few beers drinking what do we have we have we have uh oh man i'm trying to think of the, the ipas that we've got today <sighs> life and death ipa i think is what it's called good Good, good beer. It's like 6.4%. Very nice. Um, and that about does it. I got a couple more guitars over here. I'm going to get some photos on. Get them listed for the weekend for you fine folks. And other than that, uh, next week it is on. We've got lots of special guests in the studio next week. We also have Youth Illusion has a new release and a new music video dropping in one week next Saturday. So stay tuned for that. And uh, otherwise, I'll catch you on the flip side, everybody. At Essex Recording Studios, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, all that stuff. Follow us, and uh, we'll see you soon with more guitar stuff coming up after this.